the failure to limit temperatures at 1.5% at in line with the Paris Agreement is having devastating consequences for societies and also for ecosystems. It, is also, it also means that resources required to cope and respond will continue to rise exponentially into trillions of dollars. For Africa, as the climate impact worsens and becomes more expensive to deal with, priority must be on adaptation to protect our communities from severe weather events given the lowest level of emissions in our continent. The crucial question is how to urgently unlock the capital needed for climate adaptation. Finance for adaptation lags behind considerably that of mitigation, and progress on adaptation financing is slowing as climate impacts rises as confirmed by the 2023 UNEP Adaptation Gap Report. The report estimates that developing countries will need between US dollars 215 billion and US dollars 387 billion a year for adaptation during this decade. The gap in climate finance is compounded by debt crisis facing many African countries. Consequently, a significant portion of government revenue is allocated to debt servicing rather than climate action. Moreover, the current climate, the current global financial system often results in net outflows from developing to developed nations, exacerbating the challenges of sustainable development and climate resilience. In the past weeks, we've all seen European farmers using their tractors to block roads in protest. In some countries, protesters are calling for more action on climate adaptation, asking for measures to prevent farmland damage by flooding and other forms of extreme weather. In other cases, farmers are calling for fuel subsidies and for fertilizer and pesticide restriction to be reconsidered. While the issues the farmers are protesting against may be varied, it is evident that climate adaptation and protection against impacts of extreme weather events is rapidly rising on poor infrastructure in our continent also adds to the challenge and to increasing farm productivity by about between 30 and 40%. And we also lose close to 40% of all our produce because of post-harvest losses. In a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, we import food worth close to $80 billion every year to our continent, a continent with 60% of arable agricultural land that is not cultivated. It speaks volumes of what we need to do because we know what we should be doing. And we have the potential to become a global agricultural powerhouse and a net exporter of food. In fact, my friends in the Africa Development Bank, and I see Kevin here, they are telling us Africa's food and agriculture market could increase from US dollars 280 billion a year last year we could scale that up to a trillion dollars by 2030 if we get our act together. This is the Nairobi Fame TV, where we bring you the latest, trending, and urban news in Nairobi, Kenya, and from around the world. Subscribe and stay tuned for more.